Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will recall uh, some of the notation and the. Yes. Oh, it's on. Oh, it's on. I was waiting. I was waiting. Okay, so uh, I will recall some of the notation that Jim used, uh, and I will recall the problem very, uh, very quickly. At least, at least a special case of the problem, which basically you know, solved the whole problem. Okay, so as, as, as James wrote, you know, you start with some some equations. Mm -hmm. How this work? <laughs> Okay. P1. Okay. Now these for me are simply um, algebraic equations, right? And this is a tuple of variables, the x. And then maybe you also have like q1. Okay. So basically, what I'm saying is for the q, what? So you have differential equations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, example, the piece are Q was algebraic, but I am, I'm, it's basically I'm taking a first order system. Oh, okay. Oh, that's first order, and it's okay. first order system. Uh, several determinants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this X is a lot of variables, right? This X maybe. Okay. I usually don't write maps, so I'm lazy, but first X order. is a tuple of variables, right? So, I have this system of first order differential equations, and uh, okay. Oh, so, basically, what I'm saying here now. I want to try to find the solution. There's right? no inequation involved here. No, no inequation because if you have an equation, you can add variables. You can add variables, right? Oh so, sure. yeah. Okay, so so now I consider B to be defined by the PIs, right? Mm -hmm. And W. Sorry, this is To be defined. By the QIs, right? What do you mean by the QIs? Okay, so I should say that this B lives in A N. Oh, I should okay. I should say I'm only working the partial case now. So I should write Oh. It's the first order, but I, I wanna do everything partial. So it's not it's not too much. Huh? And then by the QIs, of course this. Where does this live? This leaves a to the n m to the n. M plus one times n. Right? And if, if I'm trying to find if I'm trying to find uh, solutions of this, right? Basically what I'm saying is that solutions are going to be of the form, it's exactly what James wrote, and so n, right? Such that. I'm going to use the Nava notation just because I'm not used to it that much. This Nava notation is exactly what you expect. X is in V. Yes. So I'm just going to be focusing on these systems of this form. Any given system, you can transform it into that form. Okay? And I'm going to be looking at this set, which I'm going to call set, solution set. Okay. I'm looking at the solution of this guy. Now, precisely what Jim was saying about, you know, calculate the degree of the Sarisky closure. Basically, in general, what I'm going to do, right, is calculate the degree, right, of the Sarisky closure of, of this set Z. Right. Uh, Could you define degree? Yes. So I realized all the way through Jim's talk, I really didn't know what. So I've never looked at degree. Suppose, suppose only dimension. V is an irreducible. Right. Or a variety. This is something yeah. But not that V. A different V. Okay. Like maybe different. V one or something. V one. Whatever. Right. Some other. T. Not T. No. I have another T. Something. <laughs> not T. Uh, Z. No, no, that's zero. Good. Start. U. 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 U.
Oh, yes, you do. Cardinality. Cardinality. Where the HIs are hyperplanes. Hyper mm -hmm. By the way, this guy sits inside an N. Yeah. So hyperplanes of an And the intersection is finite. Uh, intersection. Model of this theorem, somehow. Yeah, I mean, to do this as long as you have working inside some algebraic closed mm -hmm. field, but from now on, I'm going to be working inside some very large partial differential closed field. Mm -hmm. All of my things are going to be inside some partial differential closed field, and when I talk about variety or differential variety, I'm going to be talking about the, the points. Yeah, sure. That's, that's fine. So that's settled, right? So this is the definition of the, of a degree of, uh, of an irreducible. Now, if the thing is reducible, you take the sum of the degrees of the components. That's, that's my definition of degree of okay, an, an thanks. general variety, yeah, yeah. right? So for example, you can so check. What, what was in the second finite here? The, this, no? Yeah. In the, this intersection, it's finite. So I'm varying. I'm you, so you only use the hyperplanes that intersect them finite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah, this, yeah. This, 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 this number is varying like that, over all very hyperplanes, big, so that the intersection is a finite number. So in particular, in particular, if the algebraic variety u is finite, so so there's no reason to know that that thing is bounded. Okay, yeah, one has to one has to, to yeah. do that, but it's true. It's okay. bounded. It's bounded. Oh, d is the dimension. Yeah. It's bounded. Yeah. Um, but okay, was well, I was gonna say that if this is finite, then the degree I didn't write it. The degree of u equals equals this whole thing. This will give me the number of points. So if something is finite. The degree is equal to the number of points. Okay? So if I compute the degree and the set turns out to be finite, I'm computing the number of points. Yeah. So if I give a bound, if I give a bound for the degree, I'm given a bound on the number of points if the set is finite. Okay? So, so from now on, what I'll be doing is I'm gonna assume. Why do you use D hyperplanes? Oh, the dimension of you. And not n minus D. That's another way, another way to define it, yeah. is if I put a single hyper, a single uh, uh, up and subspace of co-dimension D, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I, can, I, can, I can erase this and put some E, which is an alpha, in general position, an affine subspace of dimension N minus D. That's why I said the H should be H sub N minus D? How many no. how many no, no, no. do you use? No, use D the co-dimension should be D. Oh. So, so, so here, I'm taking hyperplanes, right? I'm taking hyperplanes. So, okay. mm -hmm. so these are hyperplanes, and I'm taking D of them. The other definition, which is equivalent, which is the one James said. I, I may have said it, yeah. I, I think that's you the take, one you take said. a general position affine subspace of co-dimension. Of co-dimension D. D. Well, when you intersect, that means you take equations together. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly how you one equation for one equation, one, one, one. You have D, so dimension. Oh, oh this is the equation. Oh, yeah. oh right. Yeah, I'm right. yeah, sorry, thanks. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is my definition of, of degree, and actually, it's a good thing that, that you asked me for this. It's a good thing because what I'm going to be using a lot, a lot, is that suppose I take uh, two uh, subvarieties, two, two varieties of a n, two varieties of a n. What happens if I take the intersection? Somehow, I want to bound this and. Uh, no, there is there is there is a Besut's inequality. So I'm gonna be using this freely. Okay, I'm gonna be using this a lot. Okay. Uh, okay, so now the, the assumption that I will do from now on is that this set is finite. And I'm gonna to try to give a bound on the number of points. Assume Set is finite. And the question is, can I give a bound? Can I give a bound here on the number of points just by looking at these p's and q's? I just want to be okay. I'm looking at these p's and q's. How can I give a bound? And I'm going to give you a hint of what the bound is going to look like, more or less. It's going to look at the form degree of of B, remember B is the one defined by the P's. And those are, they're just polynomials, not differential. Polynomials. 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 The P's are, P's are polynomials, right? Mm -hmm. So the polynomials, these Q's are in a lot of variables. 
but they are just algebraic polynomials. You think you mean algebraic exactly. polynomials? Exactly. So I can I can look at them and so, say something. So the QI thing. does does not uh, include the derivative of the piece. Not necessarily. No, 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 exactly. So, so, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Not necessarily. This is just, this is just some, the it cubes might. are just some polynomials. It, it, it might include. It might, it might. Well, it might, I mean, but you don't, but don't not necessarily. necessarily. That. So basically what I'm saying is that take any W, which is a sub-variety of this half and space. That's, right. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Basically, I, I could have erased this and just say V is a variety like this, right. W is a variety like this, and I'm thinking about this set. That's good. That's good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm taking time to count the number of points here, and it's going to look something like this. Degree of V, degree of W, to some power, where the power will only depend <coughs> on two pieces of information. It will, it will only depend on the number of variables, so my, my x here plus n variables, number of derivations, and that's it. That's why I want to find my bound. So what I'm saying is that once we fix the number of variables and number of derivations, right, I can find constants so that the constants do not change and only the degrees change. So the degree changes the degree of z, if you want to think about the degree of z, changes polynomially on the degree of v and w. Okay. But, but that polynomial is a very high degree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at least it's it's gross polynomially at most. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. <laughs> this, this, I, I'm not saying anything about these numbers so far. But yeah, in general, it might be very large. Sure. Okay. 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 It's on the blackboard. Those degrees in the simple cases. In the simple cases, yes. So when we're going to talk about the, the simple, basically the simple case is two derivations. In that case, we can find really, really, really good bounds. Maybe not. You know, optimal, but really good bounds. Okay, so this is the problem. That's 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 the purpose of the of the talk today. Trying to do something like this. Okay. Now, before before talking about that, okay, I'm gonna remind you of uh, of what James basically uh, showed in the, in the last lecture. Um, I'm gonna erase all of this. So this is these are my assumptions. Okay, um, so James talked about uh, this, um, this variety, right? Was everyone here last no. talk? No, okay, so. What is this? What is this? I take, I take all points. No. Okay. Okay, I, I used Nala before, but I'm going to use this whole thing. Okay. Is everyone okay if I use this? Is this, is this more or less clear what I mean by... But you mean V. Sorry, well, uh, okay, maybe, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe little V, right? Maybe. Oh. You should write what you do. Yeah. Okay, I will write what this is in a second. Um, uh, with this, I mean, uh, I'm going to write like this. I hope this indication is okay to everyone. Mm, that's fine. It's a family, delta one group. Okay, but uh, really? maybe, maybe you I think you probably have to say. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not, it's not right. Where, where if I take sigma to be some tuple, if I take sigma to be some tuple in here, right? If I take any tuple in n to the m, then by this, I think we mean. So, notation. Take any sigma in, in M, then delta sigma applied to some variable xi, it's just exactly what you would expect, right? And now the Nabla map, the elf Nabla map, is just, you know, looks like this, where I go to order L. Okay? How many variables do I get in here? We get. Um, we get. L so the normal sigma is just the sum of the sigma. Time sensor. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The normal sigma is be sigma one plus yeah. the sigma. So the, the order of these will be the sum of the, of the, of the coordinates. So once I have, maybe maybe v lives in a n, so the v has n coordinates. 
how many coordinates do I have in here? N times these combinations. Just, yeah. just stuff. Okay? And so this is the VL, the, the, B, the BLP. By the way, there is, no, there is no standard name for this, so I'll call it the, the BLP. BL. No, the BL, the BL. Uh, okay, this is what James uh, defined in the last talk, and he, you know, he, he explained, because it's, it's not trivial, uh, the following two facts. Well, one of them is pretty straightforward from some uh, results, but I guess both of them. Dimension of the BLV, right, it's equal to, by the way, I don't want to be right. I don't want to write this 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 combinations and stuff all Capital the time. Yeah. Alpha sub L. Alpha sub L is this combination thing. Because M is fixed. M is a number of derivations, so my M is fixed. Times, right? So alpha L times dimension V. And the degree of V L V is bounded by. I take a degree of v to the power of okay. So these are the two things that James approved in his talk. And, and this is sharp as well. And these are these two both are sharp, yeah. So but the first is sharp. Well the first one is equality. So this is very sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Super sharp. <laughs> yes, you know, it is, yeah. Now, the, the second one, yeah, you can find B so that it's equality. Yeah, you can't get better than equality. It's true. Okay, um, so those two things I'm going to use a lot. Now, before moving on, uh, James talked about, um, I'm going to remind you, people who weren't here, about what happens in the ordinary case. What happens in the ordinary case is the following. The, remember, I'm, I'm assuming this, this uh, set uh, is finite. Right? It's the solutions to this first order differential equation is finite. Well, this is bounded. So do you? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, closure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a risky closure. Right? I mean, if you want to compute. Oh, sorry, for the BL. Yeah, the BL. Yeah. Sorry, the say yeah. This is a risky closure. So this is a risky closure of this, uh, this differential variable. Okay. Uh, okay, so in the case of one derivation, so one derivation, so the ordinary case, this, this was done in a paper of, uh, of Trushovsky and Pile, and I'm going to read my notes maybe, let me see if I remember, 2B, two 2B, two yeah, that's right, This is, this is what happened in the ordinary case. So the, the two constants that I have on my exponents, right? That's a product. It's just that. That's a product. Uh, here? Yeah. Yes, product. So th those are two constants, very simple constants. So, so you can see how this balance is doubly exponential in degree and dimension, right? OK, so that's what you get. Now, what, what James did is he talked about the algorithm, how to do it. So I want to I I say, how, how does the algorithm work again? Um, take, uh, so we have the information B and W, right? So you take, um, you eat it, right? Uh, what do I want to, I don't want to be assuming that W is going to set B and B. I'm not going to assume that W lives inside B1, okay? Because you don't need to assume that. Okay? Because remember, I just gave you V and W as some sub varieties of some uh, affine spaces. So I take this, right? I take this. Now what I do is I project this, I project this in B. Right? I project this in B. So by the way, I mean James, there's this map. I have a map. Which is just projection. If you take coordinates, you literally the projections. You can take projections, right? By the way, here I should I can write L. But if, if it's one, then I usually don't write any cell in subscript. Okay? So I can project, okay? Now, what happens, what happens says, like what happens, what happens, if this set, this set, so this set, is dense. What happens if this set is dense indeed, okay? Hey, just a small point. Sure. Um, you, should, you should also have a, um, 
a, a D in front of the two to the D of, in the exponent of V, of degree V. The left let's, one. Let's go the left, left one. one. Put a D in front of the two to the D. Like it's this? D times two to the D. D times two. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. Put it right here. So. Um, I thought I, I thought I thought it's it. always correct when you make it bigger. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Wait. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, okay. it's the, it's the, the sh if I'm talking about equations of order L or something, then there should be an L. But I'm only restricting myself to ah, yeah. one. Sorry, order sorry. One. You're so doing these order one. So okay, these sorry. Are, sorry. Yeah, I'm just doing order one. So when you do order L. Some yeah, constants yeah. appear, but as I said, you can reduce the problem to. D oh, I see. D is your dimension. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. No, no, it's all right. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what happens, right? What happens? Like, what happens? Uh, okay, the following happens, which is. Is the bound tight? Sir? Is the bound tight? This bound. I mean, uh, it, but that depends what you mean. Do you mean. For, do you mean that it's for, reachable? There is an example where they're equal. I, I would, yeah. I would oh yeah, so. but but it's so. it's kind of it's that may not be a completely fair question, right? Because oh, okay. you, because you could you could yeah, do you mean easily. do you mean where they're equal where you where for any arbitrary d that you get to pick or no do you, no for some d for some d and for some and, polynomials that you give well yeah but I mean they are equal but it's not fair though because. Because you could always take, you could always yeah, take. You cheat. You can cheat and take the v. Yeah. Yeah. Cheat very big you know, you could always take v to be a finite set. Oh, and, okay. And, okay. And, okay. And, you're gonna and, you know, take a take the bazooka. In this case, yeah. 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 So, so that's why. I, see the examples. So I think in, okay. in s the smaller d is, the more likely you are to produce examples like yeah, that. Uh -huh. um, but I still, I think it's true for you fix a d and then you can. So, so the, the other I think question so. would be for every I d, think for, any you can for every d, is there an example where it's tight? Yeah, that's what I'm saying is yeah, maybe a, a good I mean, question. I, I, I yeah. really didn't think about it, but I, I think know. it should be true. But I think it should be true, but I'm not gonna, you know. If you calculate such a family of examples, then Omar and I would be happy to talk to you about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, just, just of the bazooka examples. Well, cheat, cheat. You can cheat. You can, you yeah. I mean, you can cheat. You can always cheat. You should cheat, but you can always cheat. Okay. Um, okay, so what, where was I? Where was I? Right. So what happens if this projection right, is dense in B? Well, then we use what James stated, which was the following. Whenever you have uh, some variety, which is, again, I'm not assuming that W is contained in the prolongation, but in this case, just for this statement, I am going to. Suppose that W projects dominantly into V. I'm assuming these things are reducible. And this is a, it's a one here. One. Okay, this happens. Uh, I should say, uh, sorry. Yeah. Do you allow d equal to zero? <laughs> Sorry? Me, do you allow d equal to zero in that? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, 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 I allow d equal to zero. We do that. Then w, the degree of w will not be involved. It won't, it won't. The, if degree is zero, then I'm just going to degree of d. Yeah. And so the number of points will be bounded by the degree of d. Because if d is zero, then that means that v was finite. Ah, right. And so z is just a subset of v, so it will okay. be bounded by the degree. Okay. Uh, sorry, here I was missing something. Then um, I'm gonna write it like this. Then the um, the this guy, the guy we were talking about, right, is 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 uh, is dense. In, in, v. in particular, it's infinite. <laughs> okay. In particular, as long as the dimension of v is not zero, so so v v is an infinite set. Then once you have that something projects dominantly, then this sharp set will be infinite. Okay? This sharp set will be, this is a fact. In the ordinary case, this again, I'm assuming again here, one derivation. And this is true in the ordinary case. And so what happens if this projection is dense? Well, the fact tells me that the sharp set, which is my z, tells me that it's infinite. And I'm assuming it's finite. Okay, so just by assuming that my sharp set is finite, then I, 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 cannot, I cannot have projection being dense. 
this, this cannot happen. This cannot happen, right? Therefore, the projection is not dense. So therefore, if I take the projection, and I take the closure, then this has smaller dimension. So I reduce the dimension. And, and I, I repeat the process. I repeat the process. I, I take, now, now I replace my V for this V prime. I take again some intersection like this. I project. The projection cannot be, cannot be dense because of that. Reduce dimension. And I keep reducing dimension in the algorithm until I reach, you know, it has to stop eventually. And then you, you keep track of the degrees while you do this process of, basically, what, what am I doing? I'm intersecting, right? Mm -hmm. So for intersection, I have the Besut inequality. Mm -hmm. how, do I, how do I keep track? I'm intersecting. So I know by Besut inequality, the degree of intersection is the degree of this and the degree of this. I know the degree of this. This is what James did, right? The degree, the degree of the VLB, we know what it is, bounded. And then the projection uh, will be, the degree of the projection is always less than or equal to the degree of the thing inside. So in all this process, we can keep track of the dimension, of the degree, sorry, degree, to get this bound. Okay. So the ticking the closure will affect the degree. No, it won't. It won't. It won't. The degree, actually, the, the degree of a, of a constructive is only defined if it's closed, right? Well, Even. yes, but you can cheat. You can say that the degree <laughs> of a constructible, constructible set, set yeah. is equal to the degree, the, the sum of degree of the components of the closure. So you take the closure. Basically, what I'm saying is you can define the degree of a constructible set to be the degree of the closure. Okay. And you can cheat, right? But yeah. Okay. Okay, um, okay, but so, so you can see that um, in order to get a bound like this, we are fundamentally using this fact. We are fundamentally using the fact that if I have something projected dominantly, then I get infinitely many points. I'm using this, this fact is the main fact to, to, to give this kind of bound. Okay. Now, what James and I are trying to do is do this in the partial case. We're trying to, trying to do something similar, right? We're trying to bound by the degree of, main, uh, the degree of B and W, some powers. And so we want to write an algorithm. The algorithm would work right away if we write it like this, and we knew something like this. However, consider the following example. Uh, take B to B. The alpha. Okay, example. Uh, take two derivations. Take V to be the alpha line. V to be the alpha line. Right? In this case, you get that V1 of V. What is V1 of V? I we'll have two derivations, so this becomes A2. Okay? And now take. take some tuple, two elements in the field, such that the derivative of one of, of b2 is zero, and the derivative of two of b1 is not zero, and set w to be the copy of a1 cross. Oh, you uh, you offer something universal, so so the differentiation is uh, subjective. Yes, 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 exactly. Oh, okay. So I can find I can find these two guys, b1 and b2, okay. so it's fine, it's probably. Okay, so consider this example, right? So my V is all of a, the alpha line, therefore the V1V is all of a three, so I have two derivations, and I'm taking my W to be just you know a copy of the alpha line times these two points. So it's just basically a copy of the alpha line, you know, it's just a, an alpha in subspace uh, translated at this point B1V2. Okay? So The W projects dominantly. And this, this is a basic example, by the way. The W that I chose there is it's an algebraic variety contained in the B1 of B. So you should think about this statement. Okay? This is statement I have sounds of variety of 1 of B and this projecting dominantly. And I conclude this. So here I have W, which is a sub variety of B1 of B and projects dominantly. Right? So, okay, what happens? Well, the thing is that 
In this example, this is empty. Okay? There, there are no points inside here. Uh, maybe, uh, this is just of the way we build this, but why? Why is this true? This is completely easy. So, so suppose you have a point. Suppose you have a point, right? Suppose you have a point in this guy. Okay, then, We know this, right? This, this, this is true. <laughs> this is true, right? You take. The so you're, you're proving it is empty. Now. Yeah, I'm proving it's empty. So that contradicts uh, the m equals one case. Uh, so I'm doing to the. I'm doing to the partial case. Yeah, I'm doing to the No, the partial case doesn't follow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, yeah this is proving that yeah. you, you cannot expect you this. You can whole. expect the whole. You can't expect the whole case, yeah. when you have only two derivations. Right. So of course, if you have right. more than the same ones. Mm -hmm. But why is true? Okay, we know this is true, of course. Mm -hmm. However, what is this? Delta 1 of A will be B1, and delta 2 of A will be B2. Okay? So delta 2 of A, B2, and delta 1 of A, B1. But delta 1 of B2, I chose it to be non zero, and the other one, delta 2 of B1, Oh, sorry, I think I gave it back <laughs> This is zero, and the other one is not zero. Okay. I mean, this is just a build up example. James, it's green. Yes. These are questions from Taylor. So ah. he, in fact, was asking questions through the oh. chat of the user oh. uh, while Jim was talking, and oh. we didn't pay attention to them. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. right. And so these are questions along the talk, and so oh. maybe Jim will comment later. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Yeah. How good of you? I surely will. What does it say? <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to read. Jingles, I'll, I'll read the question and provide it answers. Okay. okay. Please. Okay, so, so basically what I'm saying is that this fact does not hold in the partial case. So we, we can't expect it to apply it in order to get this bound. Keep trying. I'm going to try to use this. Okay, so there is, there is no such a thing. However, what is really the problem? What is going oh, Maybe I should leave this. What is really the problem? Well, the problem is that you cannot just choose an arbitrary tuple, mm -hmm. a comma b1, b2, and expect that you know build some derivation or pair of derivations such that the deriv delta one of a is b1 and delta two of a is b2. You need something that will uh, make the second order in the relations exactly. You need some sort of integrability. That is the problem. You need some sort of integrability. You can't just choose like oh yeah, take a tuple. Satisfying only these relations. Yeah. Well, no, you need to be careful because they need to satisfy um, higher order equations and the commutativity, which is integrability, um, mm -hmm. is, is, is a, it's an obstacle to do this, right? Okay, so this is basically what this example is saying, okay? Just be careful. You cannot just choose a tuple arbitrarily. You really need something very strong in order to define you know, derivation. Mm -hmm. okay. So, but, but, but now, how hard do you need to go? So if you think about it, okay, I'm going to go into that right now. So in order to answer something like what I, so what I want, so now that maybe for the next 25 minutes, what I want is to give some sort of analogous version of this for but, the partial case. But isn't it true that if you assume that V is finite, then the amount of uh, in the Ruby condition is finite, and uh, since you are universal, you can avoid them. But the thing is that the V doesn't have to be, the, the set is finite, the, 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 right. this, but the V is not finite in general, right? So if oh, I V think, is not finite in general? No, no, V is not finite. What is finite v. is the sharp. V, ah, okay. Exactly, so v, v is just a variety. The one that I'm assuming is finite is this one. Ah, ah, okay. V doesn't have to be finite. All right. Okay, so I want to write something like this, something like this. But due to the integrability condition, one needs to go beyond order one. That is the whole point of what I want to do. One needs to go beyond order one. And now I'm going to go into the, what I'm going to do for the next 20 minutes is uh, recall some results by David Pierce. So the following are uh, results. So this is a little it's a bit technical, but I think it's worth things worth going through following. 
Okay. Um, a bit of notation. Okay. So I already, I already wrote down, I already wrote down what I meant when I, I, I when I had this, right? I already said what that means. Okay. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about two uh, orders. Two orders. Uh, so the first order I'm gonna write. I'm going to write a first order, which is something that is called some people call it the product and sum ordering. So if I take an element in here, when is that element less than or equal another element in here? So I'm taking two elements in here. I'm trying to define what does this mean? What does this mean? When you write n, you just mean one through n minus one. To n minus one, yeah, from zero. Zero to n minus one. Well, this is going to be less equal to this if and only if, first of all, the, these are equal, the i is equal to j, and this is less than or equal to this in the product order. So what does this mean? It means, simply means that each coordinate is less than or equal to the other coordinate. Right? If I take two tuples in n to the n, then the, each coordinate is less than or equal to the other coordinate. Okay? So is, is, is it clear? What this the ordering is, this product. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no, notice, but I really, I really, you know, to even compare them, I need the last coordinate to be the same. I can't compare things that have different last coordinates. What do you mean you can't? Oh wait, well, they it's are, a they, partial order. It's a partial order. Oh, you only have a partial have order. A partial. Yeah, no. maybe right where you mean by the so, product so, order. So you don't, you don't want a ranking at all. Oh, oh here, you, you mean here? <laughs> even, even the product order is a partial order. Yeah, right? yeah. I know. So but it's, it's, okay, it's a partial order. Yeah, but, you, but, you, but you can use partial order to define a ranking, but you're not defining yeah, 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 exactly. But you don't want a ranking. No, I, I guess, yeah. No. Well, no, you really don't want to. No, I mean, this won't give you a ranking in general, right? Yeah, uh, of course not. I mean, if you say that. Well, yeah, right. Right. Because we're not, yeah, you're we're not, not total choosing order. some yeah. priority. Total order. Right, 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 some yeah, of the yeah. coordinates. No, yeah. Yeah. So product order just means that sigma so i not. is decimal equal to tau i, you know, for, oh, and how, how an i, so maybe k. Okay. Right, for all, so k from one to Okay. That's fine. Okay, so you have this order on this guy. Perfect. So I'm going to use that order. Now I also have another order. I have these two orders. So I'm going to write the triangles. Now this one, people, this one is the canonical ranking for differential algebraized. This is the canonical ranking. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to compare two elements again. How do I want to write it down? I'm going to compare two elements. And you should think about this. You should think about this as this. You should think about the pair sigma i as this in the terminate. And this is the canonical ranking. So this, that will happen if and only if. You know, the usual thing for the canonical ranking. Uh, you take all of it. You take the order. Yeah. Then you take the, you take the, the, which variable? You take the variable, right? And then you take, you know, the, the orders of each individual derivation. You take this this thing, and you this this is this is less less than or equal. Lexicographically. Example. So how do I want to less than or equal to the other one, right? So lexicography. Yes. Well, this is the this is the canonical ranking for. It's the, a canonical ranking. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry Alex. That's eight canonical ranking. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe we disagree. No, okay. It's eight canonical ranking. There's no canonical one. There is no canonical. No. This is the one I like. So. Okay. <laughs> By definition. By definition. Okay, it's fine. It's eight canonical ranking. It's a, it's a very common rank. Uh, okay, so we have these two. We have these two partial order in this set, right? In this set, we have these two partial order. Now, this whole thing is about when can we find a tuple such that we can extend derivations, right? So like, oh, when can I find this tuple so that I can extend derivations? So, so what do I mean by that? <laughs> oh, okay. Let me think if I want to. What time is it? Yeah, Three o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. So I should probably just go right to the point. Let's go to right to the chase. Um, oh, in fact. Is it? Oh, I think we need to find. What I mean by, and what I mean to find by leader, the minimum of these. Yes. Yeah. Um, right. 
definition. Um, oh, suppose we start with some extension of k. So now, so now, now I'm just fixing some differential field k. K is some differential field. I'm fixing it. And I'm taking some extension which has the following form. These, these, these are tuples living in L, of course. Uh, I, L, sigma. Okay, such that sigma of I is maybe it's strictly less. Yeah, strictly less. So basically, I'm just fixing tau j and I'm taking just some field. This is just a field generated uh, by, the, by this large tuple. So okay. tau is given? Yeah, yeah, tau, tau is given. Tau and j are given. Tau and j are given. Tau and j are given. Those are fixed. They are given. And I'm taking this very long tuple. This very long tuple. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. So this is just, this is just a, a field extension. That's all it is. So tau and j are given. And I'm having this large tuple, a sub i sigma. And I'm saying L is the field generated by this tuple over K. Oh, so, so tau is a, so, so, so L depends on tau and J? Yeah, but the thing is that it comes together, right? So L is some oh, I see, yeah. field extension generated by some tuple Bound. where the length of the length of the yeah, tuple. Got it. So, yeah. so what, what's the range of this set? I goes from I less than N, I slept yeah. or I or what? Yeah, yeah. So, no. so, so remember, okay, okay. so these right. these guys they live and then it's right here. Right there. So the sigma is in here, and the i goes from 0 to n minus 1. Oh. Okay. Well, you can say 1 That's to n, or 0 n minus 1. Yeah. No, I, I just want to make sure what should be. It, what is what? fixed? Oh, this is, this is fixed. This is fixed. Yeah, that's the sort of thing. So, so the tau j is, is defined on L, L side. I mean, L of tau j. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can say like that. Yes, yes. We can say like that. So, so, so yes. you're adding on a i sigma for all sigma i less than tau j? Yes. I'm adding all of those. So it's, it's a big two. Yeah. It's a big two. But the a's are varying now. The a's are, are varying, right? Yeah. Okay. Now. The a's are varying. Oh, yeah. Well, let me. It, it, what is varying is the i and the sigma. The i and the sigma. Yeah, and the sigma. You have a tuple of some length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, generating right, 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 right. a field. So a is, a is fixed okay. also. Okay. A is fixed okay. also. Okay. Yeah. So maybe let me write this. This is the first element of that tuple. This is the first element of this tuple. And then maybe, you know, maybe zero if you put a one. No, 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 no. no. They're just formal symbols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm enumerating some generators of L. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. No, 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 no. No, you're not. Yes, I am. How, oh. what are the generators <laughs> of L over K? Sorry, sorry? What are the generators <laughs> over K? These, ele these elements of K, what right? Doing? These A's are elements of L. A over, so A is varying. Well, it's, a list it's a set of generators, of like e to the L. 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 One is the chicken and the egg. Are you defining L first, or are you oh, defining okay, okay. A okay. given? Given a field extension. Yeah, huh? generated by that. Of the form. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, no? Yeah, yeah, given like that, of the form. Of that form, for some A? From one single? No, 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 A is, there's A sub I, and I is varying. Yeah, and sigma is varying. <laughs> Yeah, I is varying and sigma is varying. This is fixed. This is maybe, I don't know, this is maybe. It doesn't put all the quantifiers. So that's right. That's why, that's why I don't yes. know what he's doing. <laughs> well, well, uh, you don't? No, you have to tell me what, I, what is fixed and what is varying. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fixed, fixed maybe. Right. Uh, <laughs> A few so generators. Can I, maybe this will help clear it up, Omar. So, is L finitely generated as a field extension? Over K, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so yes. he's fixed some tau and some J yeah. and some list of generators so that when you differentiate oh, I don't the want AIs to. some well, certain well, number of times, they what generate what L so, as a field. So, 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 so there's a quantifier, there's a quantifier slash uh, yeah, sorry, A, sorry. a in it. L. Yeah, you're right. So, so let me That's write what them. I'm asking. Let yes. me write like this. So L yeah. is gener is, is how this form. L is yeah. field generator okay? by, and I start I start you know writing down. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Down, and down, you down, might down. consider all such fields okay. all the way to you know have some enumeration. I'm just writing. Given a field like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said that. No, no, no. <laughs> Give, so given a fixed I have, a, I have some. So you're given a fixed a zero. Given a fixed a bar. They all live in L. Yes. Yeah. No, L could have many, many A bars. 
Yes. Yeah, but he's picked a particular one. He's picked a particular one. You think a particular one. Yes. Yeah. I'm used to go, okay, maybe what this one okay. I'm saying. Oh, I, I see. And it, and it happens that you're L is generated by that in this one. I yeah. see what you're okay. saying. So all I'm saying is that the K, I think. think of field, I they have finite times. generated field <laughs> extension. And now, suppose that the generators, you can enumerate them this way. Oh, okay. Is that, oh. Is that, uh, so yeah. so finite general field extension. Finite general field extension, so it's that I can choose a tuple of generators right. which I can enumerate this way. Yeah. So L need not be differential at all. No, 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 no. this is just field okay. extension. There are no derivations involved in this. So, so uh, is it really essential for your construction to uh, consider uh, L of this form, or would it be sufficient just to uh, simplify it and leave the uh, absolute value of C? That would be easy, yeah, you're right, you're right. Maybe that would be, maybe for notational purposes, that would be easier, right? It, it, uh, here you have, your, your notation is finer, but you might not, no, 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 what, what I mean is that, can you just feel, uh, uh, you know, parameterize it just by the values of uh, absolute value of sigma? And uh, forget about i's. Ah, oh, okay, it's sure, sure. Construction or you well, have to, I mean, be to do that fine. For what I'm going to say, that should be just sufficient. That's sufficient. Yeah, sufficient. Yeah. So maybe I'll stick to that. So I'm not going to put. So the, the i will go from zero to n, mm -hmm. but the the order of sigma will be less or equal to some number. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's, that's okay. Easier. Number. Number. Because that's what we're used to. That's what we're used to. Yeah. Number. 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 Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. But then you. That's all. But then you're changing your whole thing. No, no, no. No, no, no. You see, that's, no, that has nothing to do with... Wait, wait, wait. To simplify it, not to initiate things. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no I, I... Let, let me... Okay. Let, that's may, I, may, I speak, may I speak? May I speak? May I speak? You may speak. May I speak? Yes. Your previous definition. Yes. Depends on an order. This one does not. Right. Yeah, 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 no, no. The, so not, they're not the same. No, they're not the same. They're not the same. They're not the same. But for what I want... So you change your mind. Yes. You change your uh, Okay, let, let, me, put, let me put it this way. The fields of this form, yeah. right, <laughs> are a particular case of the other. But, but why? I mean, I don't want to go into this very Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I well, no, not something. really, because it has nothing to do with the order. The other one has but something in this order. Let me Ranking? say it like this. I can, I, if yeah. I have something like this, I can certainly find tau and j so that no, I can, can write this with that. Not, not with that order. You mean with the canonical so, order? So no. <laughs> No, you can. How do you know you can? Well, yeah, because here, okay, maybe here. You take a big tau yeah, with that. big order. Yeah. In so, for example, order by one, just take, you get take the following tau, which, which has order greater than s. Just the following in oh, the okay. canonical order. All right. Take that one. And maybe here I need to make it less than, strictly less. That's not the So, is that? Is that but uh, what I'm saying is that. Parameters. Okay, all right, let's go on. Okay. What I'm saying now is that for what I'm going to state, we can look at things that are generated on this one. So, what? Mm -hmm. so, we'll look so we just want to say that it's generated by some element and it's truncated j. That's all. Something like that. Okay. Something. Yeah. yeah. But this, this, this is not, not, there is nothing differential about it. This is just this is just a field extension. Yeah. This is just a field extension. Okay. Now, what I'm asking is the following. What I'm asking is that is this tuple such that Uh, is the tuple such that, okay, well, what conditions? Uh, uh, when is this tuple uh, a, when is this a, an appropriate tuple or a convenient tuple? When is this tuple uh, good? In what sense? In what sense? What I'm trying to say is that. Uh, the derivative, the maybe the k derivative, k derivative of a i sigma, right? What do you think this should be equal to? If I want this to be, and by a good tuple, I mean that I want these guys to to correspond exactly in your intuition. Your intuition of this, what should it be? It should be that this is some sort of the derivative of order sigma. So what should this guy be? You add it. Yeah. What, oh, what are you asking? <laughs> so, so in terms of if if I apply the derivative to a term i a i sigma, which element in this tuple should I get? Why does that make it good? Isn't that what you? I mean, that's a fact. 
of the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is that so? So basically, I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm calling it L, but I could refer to the tuple. So the tuple in satisfies differential condition if it is a good tuple in this sense. Okay, um, so this is the differential condition. Um, now I need to define the, the notions of uh, leader and minimal leader. Uh, straightforward. Um, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of my presentation of L being the same. Uh, so definition one, uh, an element, an element in here, an element in there, is a leader if it is algebraic over uh, over k. Okay, over the what? Over k a j tau such that. Uh, LJ in the canonical ranking. Mm -hmm. Now, um, can I ask you one thing? Yes. So, in this definition, does it depend on your choice of A? Yeah, yeah, this depends on the presentation. So, this definitely, so as I said, I could have said the differential condition for the tuple. But, right. that, okay. This is, this is how David Pierce does it, and I'm, I'm keeping his notation. Okay, so basically, what a leader is, is I take an element. And I look at the canon a canonical ranking, no d canonical ranking. So I'm, I'm looking at I'm going to call it d canonical ranking. Just the equation. I'm taking a tuple and I look at all the elements that are before it in the canonical ranking. And I ask myself if these things are algebraic over the previous ones. If it is, it's a little. So can you say that again? If a sub i sigma is algebraic over over all the previous ones in the canonical ranking. This this triangle thingy meant the canonical ranking. But um, do you really want less than or equal to? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Less than. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, sorry, that's, yeah. should yeah, have sorry. just said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, right. Second one, uh, a leader is minimal. So a leader, maybe, a leader, uh, so suppose a i sigma is minimal. Mm -hmm. If um, the, the elements before it in the other run in the other order are not leaders, uh, if given given um, which is me saying that it's minimal between the, among the leaders of the other ranking, uh, given a tau j, where now this is this is before. In the other strange ranking, I am given, then, then this is not a list. This is not a list. So it's minimal among the other order. Now, I know this order looks weird, okay. but it's. I don't think I can read it. Okay, maybe they write the best way. You mean so, so the leaders are the things that are algebraic over the previous elements, and the minimal leaders are the minimal with ones to the with respect to that order. Yeah. That, they have that ah, yeah, that, so that among, among all the leaders, it's minimal yeah, yeah, yeah. with respect to the other order. The second to last line, the very last thing you want sigma comma lambda. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So sure. this is a uh, author, uh, author set terminology in some sense. What do you mean? Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. But I mean, and what? How does it relate to that? You're right. How does it relate to that? What happens? Wait, wait, wait. What is this age? What wait. is this age? That doesn't make any sense unless I equals J. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. So in particular, if it's hot, right. then the J has to be the whole one. So why? why? No, no, because you can have you no know, order just in in a yeah. in a set that is not yet reduced. You can have that one leader divides the other in the differential sense. 
So then you get rid of those, you get the minimal ones. That's my understanding. Yeah. yeah. So here's a way to think about this order. If I give you an element, if I give you an element sigma i, you should think of it as this guy. The, the, deriva the, the derivative of this derivative of xi. Mm -hmm. So if I take another one, so j, so right? When is this, say, when is this like an or equal in this order? Well, if and only if a derivative of this 